I'm excited to show you how to work a Japanese heel. Before we get started, you need a few supplies. You will need removable markers or pins such as these. Um, when I'm working on socks for the heel, I, I often like these little guys here. They are nice, but I'll be demonstrating with these larger ones on bigger needles. If you're in a real bind and don't have these kind, you can always substitute a bobby pin. And not necessary, but um, a counter can be helpful, especially for new time short row knitters. So I have a little baby sock here that I'm gonna demonstrate the Japanese short row heel. So in it, I'm gonna put my heel over these stitches. So I have already knit over these, which would be either your leg or your instep stitches, depending if you're doing toe up or, or cuff down. And I'm gonna work my heel over these stitches. Now, just like a traditional short row heel, we're going to work to the last stitch and do something different. So if you're new to that, this is where a counter comes in handy. It shows the number one. I'm going to knit to the last stitch. So I'm uh, using the magic loop method, which is uh, you can do that or double points or whatever you would like. But the interesting thing about the Japanese uh, short row heel is that um, it can be used anytime a regular wrap and turn heel is called for. You can actually use Japanese short rows uh, substituted for any wrap and turn. But let's work our way across, knitting to the very last heel stitch. And we're gonna do a couple of things differently than a traditional heel, in that we are not going to wrap anything. We are going to place a pin. So here I am to one stitch remaining on my left-hand needle. That's why my counter says one. And then I am going to use some of these markers here. And this is why I had them in two separate piles because we always do our wraps and our markers, our pins we can call them, in pairs. So I'm gonna be putting three pairs of wrap and turn. So I've kind of separated them out. So I get knit, as I said, to the last stitch here on the heel, one remaining. And instead of wrapping, we just simply get to where the wrap would be or where your pattern says wrap and turn and turn. No wrapping. Now when I turn to the wrong side, what I'm going to do, you can see my working yarn here, I'm going to slip the first stitch purlwise and then I'm going to place a pin. So I'm going to take my first pin and I'm actually going to pin it around this yarn, not through it, just around it, which now you can see why it needs to be one that you can open and close. So once the marker is pinned on there, I'm gonna keep it kind of close to the needle here. And as I pin, as I, I'm sorry, purl my next stitch, it stays right up there. So let's look and see what we have. Here is the first stitch that we just turned and then I slipped and put a marker on and then I purled. So it almost looks like I did nothing to these stitches, but that's okay. Go ahead and we're going to purl until I have one stitch remaining on the purl side. And again, my counter still says one. Um, in a little sock like this, it's kind of easy to see, but once you get a, a full size heel with you know, 30 some stitches, it can get um, a little confusing, especially if you're new to it. So we're gonna purl to the very last stitch on the purl side, so one stitch remaining. And again, just turn. So our process is turn, slip. And again, we always slip purl wise, and then place your pin. So I'm gonna use a different color on this side, and I place my pin not through the yarn, but just around it. And go ahead and close your pin. And then as I knit this next stitch, it's going to get kind of caught there. So I will, before I um, move to the end of the row, I'm gonna take my little counter and advance it to two. So that just lets me know I have to knit until I have two stitches remaining. So off we go, knit to the last two stitches. Oops, and as I started to do that, and this will happen to you too, so I'm kind of glad I did that. See how my marker slipped down as I 
uh, left my hands to show you the counter, you want to make sure that your marker is nice and snug up there. So I'll start that again when I knit the next stitch. Make sure your little pin gets captured there. So I'm going to go ahead and knit to the last two stitches. And you'll see if you don't want to use a counter, you really are just knitting until you get to a pin on your left hand needle. So I'm moving along, moving along. Ah, there I am. Here's my pin, kind of hanging off that stitch on the uh, left hand needle or two stitches remaining. So now I just turn, slip as if to pearl, take another pin, and clip it around your working yarn, holding it kind of snug up there. And now I'm going to purl to the last two stitches. And once I do that, same procedure. So you always do the same thing every time. Work your way to the last marker that you had there. As soon as you get to, I shouldn't say last mark, the last marker you placed on that side, but it really is the next marker. Work till you get to the marker. And the last two stitches. Don't do anything except turn. And then we're going to slip, place a pin. Make sure it stays nice and snug up here by the uh, needle. Go ahead and knit. So I'm just going to be placing three pairs of pins. You always have pairs. And that's why I said I like to keep it in two separate piles, making sure that I've not forgotten one or nice and even. So I'm going to go ahead and knit to the last three. Turn my work, slip, place a pin. So now I have three pins here. You can see they're always the pins are always on the wrong side. And now I'm just going to purl to three stitches left. If you were working a counter, you would have advanced it so it showed the number three. I'm going to knit to, or sorry, purl to the last three stitches. One, two, three, and turn, slip, and I'm going to place my last pin. So now I have three pairs of stitches. I should say three pairs of markers evened all up and now we're ready to pick them up. I'm now at the point in the heel where I have finished placing my pins or in a traditional shirt whether it be wrapping and turning. You will have finished immediately after a wrong side row where you have then turned to the right side, slipped and placed your last pin. So it's just dangling off of my working yarn here. But I have an even number, and for my case, I have three on each side, and most patterns will tell you the number of paired wraps or else unworked stitches here. So now it's time to pick up the wraps, or in our case, pick up the pins. So I'm going to just go ahead and work to the other side. I'm, I'm on the knit side, which is where we'll start. But the handy thing about this is I don't really think that you'll need a counter for this part. You simply knit to the gap, which is something that you'll see in just a second as soon as I get there. So I'm merrily knitting along to the last three stitches. And here, I'll take that one out. Can you see how there's, a, there's kind of a really big gap here? And it'll be even more obvious in a, a sock so I knit to the gap. If your counter from last time showed three, it will still show three. I'm going to knit to the last three stitches. But really, train yourself to knit to the gap. When you're at the gap, that first pin that you come to will be hanging off of that 
first stitch on your right hand needle. And it's hanging below here. And this is where the pickup part comes and it's how we close this gap where we turned. We're gonna take that pin that's dangling on the wrong side and I'll try to get this over here so you can really see it. So here's, here's the pin and it's holding that little loop of yarn. I'm gonna take this loop of yarn and I'm going to put it on the left hand needle just like that so that that right side of the stitch here is in front or the right leg in front. And then I open up the pin and take it off and I'm going to work that loop I picked up with this next stitch in a knit two together. So knit two together and then I turn. So one picked up and now I'm on the wrong side. I'm just going to go right ahead and purl. I'm going to purl until I get to the gap on the purl side. If you're using a counter, it would still say three, or in my instance, three, but possibly if you had, say, 11, that you ended with 11 pairs, so you would knit to the last 11. But again, like I said, just so that you can use that for other instances, you're going to knit to the gap, and here's my gap right here. When I knit to that nice big gap here, my pin is hanging off of that stitch on the right hand needle. Now on the purl side, we have to do something a little different to work this little loop together on the pin because we want it to look the same on both, the, uh, both ends of the, the right side of the fabric. So on the wrong side or purl side, we slip that stitch then we're gonna pick up the wrap again, just like we did before Put the right leg in front, take your pin out, and then that stitch that we slid over, put it back on the left hand needle. So really we're just changing the order of those two stitches, and then we purl them together. And we'll do that a couple more times. So once I purl together, I'm going to turn, and now I'm going to knit to the gap, or there should be two stitches remaining for here. Um, you'll see we're going to have working over more and more stitches, so in other words, fewer stitches remaining at the end of the needle. So I'm going to go ahead and knit to the gap. Working my way across, and it's really, you can really see how big that gap is. There's not much, uh, not a lot of trouble seeing where that guy is. So I knit to the gap, and look at on the back, way down there, there's my marker hanging off or my pin hanging off of that first stitch. I'm going to pick that up, put it on my left hand needle with the right leg in front, open up that pin, take it off, and then I work that loop together with the next stitch and knit two together and turn. Now I'm going to purl, purl to the gap, Working my way across. You'll keep doing this. Working to the gap, picking up the pin, working it together with the next stitch. So here I am at the gap. You can see my pin's hanging off of the first stitch on my right hand needle. So on the purl side, we have to slip that next stitch. Then we pick up the wrap. Put it on the left hand needle, take the pin out, return that stitch that we just slipped, turn that back to the left hand needle, and work a purl two together. You keep doing this until after turning we have one marker remaining on each side or one wrap that hasn't been picked up. That means we're on the last step of our heel. And you can see just this little guy's poking out here. So we are going to work, do something a little bit different this time. I'm going to knit across until I get to that last pin or my last gap. And then we're gonna kind of abandon the procedure that we've done. You can see why I chose a tiny little sock here. It takes a while to knit. I get 
to that last, oops, get in there, get to my last gap here. I'm going to reach down, find my marker here, lift up that loop, put it on my left hand needle. If I can get that in there, I'll show you that again, just like that. Take the pin out, work a knit two together. So this is my last one on this left side of the heel. So work this one a little firmly if you can. Give it a nice little tug. But this time we're not going to turn to pick up that one remaining marker. We're going to come back to circular knitting and knit those resting stitches on the other side of our sock. So I'll set my needles up again and I'll just knit across. You may have a fancy pattern going on in your sock, but go ahead and again tug that first stitch kind of firmly so we close any gaps, there would be any holes, and go ahead and knit across these stitches. And that will bring us to the very last row of our heel. I'll work all the way across. And I have that stitch turned around. When I get to this heel, sorry, got some twisted stitches here. And when I get to that last marker, you'll see the last step. So I've knit across the instep, get ready to go back to the heel stitches. Now we're going to pick up that last pin, but we're going to do it on the, my stitches are a little stuck, here we go, them up here. So you can see we need to pick up that very last pin, ooh, he's hiding in there pick that up, but we're going to do it on the knit side. So pick up the marker here, put it on with the right leg in front, and then go ahead and I will just pin it. I will just do a knit two together. Here's a loop I picked up with this stitch. And again, since it's your edge stitch, try to work it as firmly as you can. And that's the last step of the sock. We're all done and we'll just knit across these stitches. So since I've done this little one here, I have a bigger example that I can show you up close what it looks like. So let me grab this guy here. This is a great big giant heel, unlike the one that we did. But in here, you can see, and I love this aspect of the heel. So here are my heel stitches, and here are my, possibly my leg stitches. And then right when I do that, turn, it just sort of turns and comes right up here. So this would be the right side of the heel and the same thing on the left side. So this column of knit stitches just makes a little turn here and kind of goes up here. So you have a beautiful, nicely symmetrical heel and that's the Japanese short row heel. Happy knitting!